In the last video we looked at planar mappings and these are really useful but they can only go in straight lines. There's times when we're going to want to map our texture around curves, maybe along tops of walls, paths, rivers, things like that. So for those we're going to need to use another type of mapping which is a path mapping. So I'm just going to go to plan and create a shape. And you'll see there's a river cart path tool here we haven't used before, which we can use for drawing out paths. So it's set to five foot, so that'll do for now. I'm just gonna freehand draw a curve. So if we've got a, a path like this, uh, I shall quickly plot it out. Terrain Painter. Let's pop a few verbs in around. Around and about. So if we had a path and we want to map around this, obviously uh, to do it using planar mappings would take a long time. We'd have to adjust the faces around individually, curving round. And they'd still be in straight lines. They would travel like this, straight in straight lines. We want a nice curve effect, so the path mapping is the one to use here. Let's pop that in. Now, there's two types of path mapping. You can map a closed loop or an open-ended. Now, this is an open-ended path, and these are the trickier of the two because you need to make sure with these that the faces at the end of both ends of the path need to be squared up so I'm just gonna change this text just something else for a minute so I can see what I'm doing apply uh, whoops fairway apply and I'll sharpen the edges again so that I can see it clearer. So yeah, these last faces need to be squared up. So I need to move this vert here. So that we create a rectangle otherwise the uh, mapping won't be able to calculate the path correctly and the same at this end they're fairly it's a fairly reasonable rectangle so that'll probably be okay like that let's just remove the the shape and the thing with path mappings is it will actually calculate all the different directions around the path it's following so we won't have to calculate anything we'll just click on one end and it will all be calculated around uh, this does mean that a path mapping can only be used once because it's specifically calculated for an individual uh, case so if you draw another path somewhere else you can't use the same path mapping again uh, because it'll have to recalculate the route it's taking so as long as we've got these two ends squared off the rest aren't quite so important if you've got a texture that you need to see uh, clearly a very regular texture obviously you want to keep the whole path as regular as you can because as it goes around curves 
it's going to distort and stretch. So more verts, sometimes a better way to go. Here I've got it very uh, rough and stretched. But if you're going around a curve like this, you would put your verts closer together, make a nice neat uh, route and try and keep all of them parallel. But for demonstration purposes, this will do for now. So I'm now going to just change this texture to something that will show up the path because obviously you're not really going to notice uh, the texture being grass like this. So I'm just going to select a different texture. I've got a brick pattern texture here. I'm not sure if I've got the texture set right actually, but there we go. So we've got these bricks, and if we want them to follow the route of the path, we need to add a path map. So I'll go Terrain, Face, New Mapping, and I'll select Path Map. And this is bricks. Now, with path maps, I don't, I rename them. I don't keep the word path in like I do with planar, um, because you'll end up with an awful lot of path maps, because you need to use a path map for every scene blend. So rather than call it path this and path that, I delete all the word and give it the name, whatever it is. If it's a trackway, I'll call it track one if it's on hole one or one A or whatever. So this might be brick three. So I'll type in brick three. Then I can find it easier in the list of uh, mappings if I need to find it again. So I'll call this brick three. And We'll select our end, so I'll select this end, and I'll add to, and you'll see our texture is now curving round. Now scale-wise, it's got a bit distorted, um, and this is something we can adjust with the V-Wrap and the U-Wrap. Uh, we can scale things up pretty easily. Scaling them down isn't so easy on a path map because it, for some reason the U-Wrap doesn't wrap around so you can't go uh, smaller. It's much easier to scale up. So you really need to make your textures small. Uh, if they're bigger than you need you won't be able to scale them down on a path map. So basically the V-Wrap will scale one way and the U-Wrap will scale the other. Normally for a path map, the V-Wrap doesn't want to be on 1. It's normally set around 10 for a normal uh, sort of use. So I'll put it to 10 and recalculate. And you'll see it's now stretched out. Well, that's probably a bit too a bit too stretched. And you can see here, getting some distortion because I haven't kept these running parallel. So if I wanted this to look neater... I'd need more verts. Again here, this is stretching because of this. I've got a long gap here where I haven't put enough verts in, but it's, you just add more verts, you won't you won't get this effect. I'm just doing it for for speed really. So you can adjust this number if we make it six. We can set our heights of our bricks. by changing this number. If I wanted to scale it up double size, I could I would scale up the V-Wrap and down the U-Wrap. So if I want the bricks to be twice the size they are now, I can go change the 6 to a 12 and change the 1 to a 0.5. Recalculate. We've now got the bricks in the same proportions but scaled up. Now the one thing you may find when you path map is that your texture isn't rotated the right direction. The thing with a, a planar map, we can rotate the texture around, but with a path map, we can't. It will always run and follow in the direction it's facing. So you might find your bricks are running the wrong way. They might be running uh, sideways. So to alter this, you'd have to go into your paint program and actually rotate the texture around. So 
I'll quickly do that. So the, simply flip your image around. So we'll go image rotation. Resave it. And then in APCD, we need to go into the texture, edit the material, browse to our texture that we've changed. And this will then overwrite the old one in the memory. As you see, it's flipped round. Click Save. And then you'll see the texture's flipped round on APCD, so the bricks are running the other way. Now, if you're following my extrude tutorial, we were mapping around vertical faces. Now, this is one thing you can do with a path map, and it saves you having to bother using separate mappings for the different directions because a path mapping will map all the way around. So, if I map this area here. select that and texture it with our bricks if I path map completely around here this is a closed loop because it's going right round and joining up again on itself if I create a new mapping for this in fact I can, could just use the original mapping, I'll show you what happens if we add the mapping here, we'll lose the mapping on this one because you can only use a mapping once, it will demonstrate that as well, so I'll just select the brick one, the brick mapping, brick three, and I'll click add to, and you'll see it's disappeared now from our original path, and we've now got the bricks wrapped around here, but you'll see, unlike the planar mapping where we got a stretch and everything distorted around as we've changed directions on the east faces and the west faces you'll see with the path map it's going completely round uh, the only problem we've got at the moment is that, a our bricks are running the wrong way again and b they're a bit stretched so we'd need to change the v-wrap again so if i change this v-wrap down to eight recalculate Let's maybe make this URAP 1 back to its original. You'll see we can alter the, the proportions and how wide the bricks are by changing the VRAP. So we'll change that down to say 7. And we get a nice perfect mapping all the way around. You'll see, like I say, there's no uh, problems where it's changed corners. The mapping's gone completely round. It's dealt with the straight sides and the curves because it's calculated it for the whole uh, set of faces, not just a single face. So I'll just flip that back in Photoshop again. Let's rotate this back, save it, and back to APCD, into our bricks, add the texture back in, and there's the bricks the other way around. Actually, I had them the right way around the first time, I just hadn't... Uh, I just had them so stretched, I think. That's, they're going the wrong way around now, so good one, Les. Let's flip it back. Save.
So I just need to change the V-wrap of these bricks because they're too close together. So if I set this 7 up to about 20, it's probably what it wants. Yeah, more than that, 30. These are quite large bricks. You really need a smaller texture. Uh, I should create a smaller brick texture with far more bricks on the texture because this, this texture is far too large. But you can see the bricks are now running in the correct direction, but I'm going to need about, say, a 45 setting. There we go. It's looking more like a brick wall. So that's path mapping.